Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. Here we have a form with a password and a confirm password to confirm the value entered is what the user intended. Right now, I can type two completely different values into these, and our Angular form is totally fine with it. This should not be okay. This form should stay invalid until these passwords match. So I've spent some time figuring out how to do this properly with signal forms, and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. But before we get started, let's look more at exactly how this form functions. First, if we click into this username field and blur out, we get a validation message letting us know that this field is required. So let's add a valid username. Okay, now we also have the same thing with our password field. When we click in and blur out, it lets us know it's required too. So let's add a password. As we start typing, we haven't met the requirements, so it lets us know what we need to do. We need it to be at least eight characters long. Then, once it's eight characters, the field becomes valid and the error message disappears. Now, with the confirm password field, we also get the required error, but as we've already seen, we can enter in a password that doesn't match, and the form is now valid because all requirements have been met. We can see this because our submit button is no longer disabled. So from Angular's perspective, this form is ready to submit, even though these passwords don't match. And this is exactly how real bugs make it into production. Everything looks valid until users start creating accounts they can't log into. This is what we're gonna fix in this video. First though, let's look at the code so that we understand what we're working with. First, let's jump into the template. Here at the top, we have our username field. Since we're using the new experimental signal forms API, it's wired up using the field directive. This connects the input directly to our signal-based form state. Right under it, we're looping over validation errors using a for block and the errors array on the username form control. That means any validator we attach to this field will automatically show up here. Then, when we scroll down, we can see we have the same setup for the password field. We've got the field directive to bind the control to the input, and then the errors loop too. And then, same thing for the confirm password too. One quick note, these are text fields instead of password fields on purpose. That way we can visually see the mismatch during the demo. If this were a real app, these would be password fields instead. So the UI is already prepared to display errors. Now let's look at where the rules live. Let's switch over to the component TypeScript. Okay, the first thing we see here is this signal named model. This is actually the source of truth for the entire form. Signal Forms builds everything from this. Current values, touch state, validity, and errors. Then below this, we create the actual form with the form function from the Signal Forms API. Inside this callback, S represents the structure of our form fields. We then use this structure to access the individual fields to add validation. Here, we have required validators on the username, password, and confirm password fields using the required function, also from the new Signal Forms API. Then we have the min length validator on the password field too. So field level validation is already working. What we don't have yet is any awareness that these two fields are logically connected. This is where cross field validation comes in. But how do we do this with signal forms? Well, it's actually really easy. We start by adding the new validate function from the signal forms API. This function lets us attach custom validation logic to a specific field in our form, including validation that depends on other fields. So the first thing we do is pass the confirm password field because that's the field we wanna run this custom validation logic against. 
Then we're going to add the value and value of in a callback here. These are two tools that Angular gives us in this validate method. Value represents the current field's value, so the confirm password field's value. And then value of lets us safely read any other field in the form. So to make our logic here more simplistic, let's store each of these as a variable. This is the key to cross-field validation. You're no longer validating in isolation. You're validating relationships between fields. Now we can compare them. So if they aren't equal to each other, and only when the confirm password field has an actual value, we'll return a custom error and message. First, we give it a kind, which is just a unique label for the error. In this case, it's a password mismatch error. Then, after this, we just need to add the error message that we want to show for this error. Then, if everything is valid, we just need to return null. This tells signal forms that the field is valid and no error should be shown. And that's it. It's that simple. Since our template already loops over errors, the UI automatically updates without any extra wiring. Okay, let's save and try this out. Okay, we didn't change anything with the username, so we still get the required message. Now, let's add a valid username again. Okay, let's make sure the required message is still showing. Nice. Now let's add a valid password. Okay, the error still disappears once it's valid. Okay, now how about the confirm password field? Its required message still shows too. And then, as we type a password, now we can see an error message telling us that these passwords don't match. Also, the form is still invalid, which we can see by the fact that our submit button is still disabled. Then, once we fix the password and make it match, the error disappears. The form is now valid and the button is enabled. This is what I love about signal forms. No services, no form groups, no subscriptions, and no custom state tracking. The model is the single source of truth, and our validation stays declarative, readable, and co-located with the form itself. If you can build this, you now understand 90% of custom validation patterns in signal forms. Soon, this is how Angular is going to want us building forms going forward. If this helped you, give it a like, subscribe, and be ready for the next signal forms breakdown. And hey, I know you want to show your Angular pride off camera, so check out the Shieldworks tees and hoodies below. They're built for Angular developers who treat this work like a real craft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.